Okay, we are going to do the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, and probably um, uh, chapter 17 as well. So, hey, Jesus bless you all, and we're going to start right now. Jesus bless you all. He also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward and an and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have to... I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him, and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. So the master commended the unjust steward, because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, you may receive you, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in righteous ma unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And let me see. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's who will give you what is your own. Um, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve Father Jehovah and money. Man and his money. And um, the notations on this, um, the parable of the dishonored, dishonest steward illustrates the stewardship of wealth. Jesus does not approve the steward's fraud, but commends his prudence in using present opportunities for his future welfare. The Christian prudent use of possessions is for the benefit of others. Jesus does not suggest that a person may buy entrance into heaven. He indicates that one's stewardship is a valid test of one's relationship to Father Jehovah. Father Jehovah tests our fitness to receive the true riches of heaven by our use of material possessions. And let us continue. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money also heard these things and they derided him. And Jesus said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but Father Jehovah knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is abomin is abomination in the sight of Father Jehovah. Since law and the prophets were until John, the law and the prophets were until John, since that time the kingdom of Father Jehovah has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. Um and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Um, whoever, now, there are notations on this. Um, pressing in, conflict in the kingdom. Jesus declares the advance of the kingdom of Father Jehovah. Father Jehovah is the result of two things, preaching and pressing in. He shows the gospel of the kingdom must be proclaimed in spirit with spiritual passion. In every generation, believers have to believe, have to determine whether they will respond to this truth with sensible minds and sensitive hearts. To overlook it will bring a passivity that limits the ministry of Father Jehovah's Kingdom. Father Jehovah's Kingdom, 
to the ex to extending the terms of truth and love that is teaching or educating and engaging in acts of kindness without question we must do these things however apart from an impassioned pursuit of prayer to father jehovah um confrontation with the demonic expectation of the miraculous and a burning heart for evangelism the kingdom of father jehovah makes little penetration in the world at the same time overstatement of pressing is likely to produce rabid fanatics who justify any behavior in jesus's name for as applying the boldness of spoken here the boldness spoken here such travesties in church history as the crusades and various efforts at politicizing in a quest to produce righteousness in society through earth level rule are extremes we must learn to reject pressing in is accomplished first in a prayer warfare to father jehovah coupled with a will to surrender one's life and self-interest in order to gain Father Jehovah's kingdom goals. Um, and let's continue. Let me see. Okay. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. Um, and the notation on this, tittle. Um, the term means a tiny mark used to distinguish Hebrew alphabet letters. The saying affirms the enduring quality of the law as the expressive will of Father Jehovah. The gospel did not set aside the law, but rather fulfilled it at a higher level. As an example of the law's permanence, Jesus refers to adultery, which was still sinful, even if it was justified by civil law. Um, there was a certain rich man uh, who was clothed in purple, and, well, let me go back. Adultery is a bad thing. Um, and... Uh, when you're supposed to be married to somebody, you are supposed to be totally committed to them um, and divorce for any other reason but adultery is, um, well, I've already discussed this before at, back in Matthew and everything and um, refer to them older videos about you know, divorce and everything. Actually, I may put in them same no the same notes in the description of this video. Um, but, you know, um, as far as, uh, you know, the kingdom of heaven, you know, Father Jehovah, Father Jehovah, Lord Jesus Christ of the Holy Spirit, you know, a just, you know, true Christian man, true Christian woman, uh, if they divorce for any other reason but adultery and marry somebody else, they're committing adultery with that other person, you know. Um, but let's go on. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be filled with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in the torments of hell, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. Jesus. Then he cr Jesus. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus, e Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from here pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest 
they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they per be persuaded through one rise from the dead. Um, and the notations on um, all of this... Um, Um, the rich man is sometimes called dives, Latin for a man of wealth. To a Jew, Abraham's bosom suggests the honored place in paradise uh, with Father Jehovah, Lord Jesus Christ of the Holy Spirit. Um, that is, the beggar received a special welcome in heaven and was seated beside Abraham. Also, the term may have been used to describe that segment of hell reserved for the righteous until following Jesus' resurrection. Hades is the abode of the dead. The description leaves no doubt that the rich man was in a place of eternal punishment. Hey, Jesus. Uh Wealth does not automatically condemn one to hell, nor does poverty in this lifetime guarantee eternal joy. One's destiny depends on one's relationship to Father Jehovah, which is often reflected in the attitude toward material possessions. The Pharisees were constantly demanding... Oh. The Pharisees were constantly demanding signs from Jesus to pr prove his messiahship. Not only did they reject the scriptural evidence concerning him, which was sufficient in itself, but they did not receive the witness of the resurrection, the greatest miracle of all. Um, and that concerned verses 29 through 31, where uh, Abraham said to Lazarus, uh, you know, they... Uh, if they won't listen to Mo Moses and the prophets, they won't listen to one who, you know, comes, um, you know, resurrected from the dead, you know. And uh, I'm going to stop right there, and then we are going to go into chapter 17. Uh, Jesus bless you all, and I also hope that all of you had a very good Easter. Um, I had a very good one with my family. Uh, Jesus bless you all.